because he exemplifies how the means of social communication can be used to advance the understanding of the Church's mission in the world, and because he challenges those who minister in the Church to use all of the technological means at our disposal to respond to the task of evangelization with civility, clarity, and caring, I am so very pleased this evening to bestow on Rocco Palmo the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Thank you. 
congratulations if you saw the light bulb of fun out of And that's why people reach you in the first place. So for the love of God, just be who you are. That's the good stuff. That's why we've been asking you this, so don't lose it now. And in that, friends, I close an extensive, eminent, illustrious program of study. It's given you so many rich tools for your future. Maybe, maybe for at least a couple of you, it might be a lesson for you too. Because God knows how often in the church we can take a really promising idea and in, a, in the name of improving it, instead weigh it down with programs, committees, piles of paper, or a bubble trying to play to what others might think. But in a word, never overthink or overplan your work. Let it be real. Let it be you. Just do it. I went through a simple place. I'm not the illusion by any stretch, but that's something I do know a thing or two about. Uh, truth be told, the only, the only reason I'm here, the only reason this, ever, this ride ever happened was that six months out of college. I had something in mind to do, but no reasonable way of going about it. So, uh, just for my own enjoyment, I started a website just to play around with it and to keep my spirits up after working days in medical data entry. I, I gotta say, I left each day of that job feeling like a bit more of my soul died over the eight or nine hours that came before it. Again, this little website was just for fun. No plans, no expectation, and some things never change, no budget. Um, I was even more of my original numbers. Um, even if it was just for the three friends I, I shared the address with, I was doing what I loved in a way that I thought 20, today's 24 hour news cycle demanded that it be shared, covering the voice of the church with the native springs, but less with the voice of a distant official people, but simply a storyteller, a believer, someone who can see the problems that are always with us, will always be with us because we're human, but always at least attempting the faith in God and everyone else, that just so long as we try, we would succeed. That we'd be okay because that's how we got that's how we've gotten through, through two thousand years so far, right? Contrary to what some might think, the greatest tale that exists among God's people, the most important thing for all of us who hold any other title in the church, is minister or saint, not bishop, cardinal, pope, sister, anything, but believer, and we can all be that. You know, it's. Sorry, that's my question. It's, it's the greatest number, precisely because it isn't easy. To believe means to trust. To have faith that doing our little flaw part, God will accomplish the rest, both within us and in our work. It's easy work, but boy, it's hard work. It's a lifetime's project. And if we can't do that for any of us, if we can't do that for ourselves and each other, then how are we going to expect anyone else to join? The work of believing my baptism is the first guest that all speech of this year graduates have done. But to you graduates, tonight, it falls in an ever more special, intense way that only flourish over the world of the years ahead. Father Pettigrew asked me to take this poll, but I have to admit, the first thought that came to my mind was the verse you heard earlier, Paul's exhortation <coughs> to the young church of Corinth. There are many gifts, but the same spirit. I'm grateful that the chaplain hit me as it did for many reasons, because class, your theologians, preachers, healers, lay, religious, ordained, and soon to be, women and men alike, lights of Christ drawn from seemingly every part of his body. Above all, your fruits of the same spirit, you've each given your yes, your fiat, to the Lord's call to build up his us, his body, his church, to advance his mission and teaching and service. And in the process to make his work your own for the life of the world. Secondly, I thought the verse that the bill is in this moment for us, this challenging moment, heartbreaking moment, but one bursting with hope in so many ways. We can't help but face a new call, maybe to a degree our church has not experienced in quite some time in this country, to seek the new outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us, to embrace his gifts. Through our prayer and our work, his purifying fire might renew us, might renew this wounded, broken body, 
this church here will grow, and so we're near the face of the earth. Admittedly, this understanding has only come to me with time. My boyhood in the church saw fire as something to be feared. We always did in Philadelphia. Since the burning torches have made this anti catholic brought several of our buildings to the ground in the 1840s. Indeed, no shortage of our own elsewhere fear that fire too, not because of persecution or arson, but because they can't control it. They can't manage it. They can't find a place for it in schedule. It doesn't come with instructional books. It doesn't come with a budget. It's just not as easy to deal with as a light bulb. So along these lines, you can take it to the bank if the rubric's ever printed it, at least some places, God forbid. But, but substitute the fire basement for an electric one and a bunch of those cheap battery powered candles. And you can almost hear it now. At last, we won't have to spend Easter money scraping the wax off the cubes anymore. <laughs> but if the light of Christ is really going to burn, friends, if it's really going to live, there will always be wax on the cubes. And that wax is a metaphor for us, where its existence is seen as inconvenient. It manifests the existence of a church which has lost its soul. A community of convenience, predictability, one less administrative management. The spirit isn't so much the guy, it's something the members see to do it. As you know well, it even it. The approach isn't even worth trying. We do it at our peril. For one, we lose everything. More importantly, whenever it happens, wherever it happens, we all lose. One green minister was blessed to know in my boy, but was once asked to me what was going through his mind at the end of the day. He seemed to get so much done, and he replied, I pray that I haven't stifled any impulse of the Holy Spirit. How true and needed that is. Especially, especially for all of us. Especially now. That same spirit that drives us to believe be led by it, likewise calls us to do, to push forward, to build the church, not with works and more, but in its most beautiful form, that which is built with living stones. I know we have many uh, masters in, in healthcare mission here. I hope especially those of you who are in, uh, haven't spent Christmas Eve in a hospital, I hope none of you have spent Christmas Eve in a hospital. But I have, twice. Just in the last few years, over the last few years, it's been my maternal grandmother's lot in life. Uh, my readers who are here will know her by her preferred nickname, The Boss. But uh, whatever might be good and loving and faithful, and yes, we're both, uh, as you're experiencing right now, and me has its root in a 93 year old matron, all of four foot seven, born and orphaned, but led by faith to be sure. Seven kids, 26 grandkids, more great and great great grandchildren than we can keep track of anymore. And someone whose trail of tears in this life, from losing both parents before she was five, to becoming a widow by 40, working through jobs to raise her family, and resisting pressure to marry again, and even more. All of that's made her the greatest example of love I've ever known in my life. Greatest example of ministry, even in terms of sacrifice, the greatest example of One of those humbling things as I stand here tonight, this foot over my shoulders. The greatest teacher I've ever had only ever finished sixth grade. And I confess that much as I'm overjoyed, humble, honored, still speechless somewhere me to be here. I'm looking forward to heading home to our nursing home, putting this cap on her head and this phone on her shoulders so that she can know what this feels like. And indeed, to see yet another instance dreams she sacrificed so much for it, that we would have come to pass. But back to that hospital on Christmas Eve. It was a horrible quest. Thanks be to God, the walls cut through. Fine. But what killed me looking through those walls, one year, one time more powerful than the one that preceded, was how you could cut the loneliness and the despair of the place with the chainsaw. I know this isn't the most uplifting subject matter for a commencement speech, but the feeling of that night struck me powerfully and it really hasn't left me since it's been three years. I couldn't help but come away with the conviction that if Christ were to return again to the places where his love, his presence, began to be felt most, where his peace and joy were being most powerfully longed for, this was it. Not to 
mention the shelters, soup kitchens, or frigid workbenches, stroke rooms, the broken, the abused, the marginalized, whatever shrink they may be. Graduates, ministers, let this be a reminder to you of the hope, the presence, the consolation. You offer in Christ to a world that needs it desperately. You, especially all of us in this church, we are Christ's body. We are his gentle hands, his strong feet, his life-giving voice. You're preaching when you tell people what that God is. But your service, above all to the least, to whatever form they take, shows them what God is. And soul by soul, when touching them, we not only give Christ away anew to a people seeking his friendship, but along the way, we encounter him again. And so we're with As we 
move forward, we each need to ask ourselves constantly how well we're living up to it. Not just our own work, but how well we build up the body in building up each other. The challenge is to, first, the time and so the numbers tell us, roughly a quarter of the American church actually makes it to the parish on Sunday. We face the task of seeking our own, listening to and learning from them. The spirits of flame might be sparked anew and more brightly as well. Yet no less importantly, among those of us already here working in the fields, and beginning with each one of us, we need to beg God for the grace to know most of our weakness, to be reconciled to each other, to recognize anew that while the other parts of the body may not look like ours, like what we like, or do what we do, they're no less a part of Christ. No less a gift of his spirit, no less a building block of his church, with a treasure to share than we are. When we realize this, the body becomes stronger, works better, and focus. When we fail to see it, the body seizes, it hurts us, and in a word, it accomplishes when it can accomplish its less severely less. It's worth recalling here that the first Pentecost didn't have several times for convenience. Varying options for guitar and chant. But regardless of their own differences, the apostles and disciples were all gathered together in one place. And they barely left the sun before receiving 10,000. But one day, the church of today, we're already doing a lot. We can do even more tomorrow if we, the closer we get back to that example. inspired others to do the same. It's easy to say it again. It's so hard to do sometimes. But graduates, I beg you, please, let us work. Let us all of us work. Let us do what we can to bring our family, our off disaffected, divided body, back together. Only then can we become the church Christ wants us to be. St. Louis has another great religion besides Catholicism, as many of you know. So, let's think of it this way. You've got your cardinals. I've got my family, so I'm not talking about this horse this week. But it's all still baseball, and that's what matters. Unlike the game, though, not, nobody's in the stands here. We're all called to take the field. We're all playing for the same team. Each in our own position. And every day, every day, is October. It's a World Series that's ours to win us so long as we step up to the plate. Tonight, among the class, already reflecting the Spirit's countless gifts, the Aquinas Institute is included within the many ways the body is built with a new way of going about the work. Some might see the media and the internet as pioneering and renovating. But all it really is is when generations of these classes come before, every generation of Christians each of these graduates have already done. Found a place to preach the gospel, to serve God's people, and witness to the beauty of the journey. This evangelical legacy is especially true here. This is founded by missionaries whose faith and work built the church and will become known as the Rome of the West. Thanks be to God, especially in the graduates, especially in Aquinas, especially in St. Louis University, that legacy is well alive here in St. Louis. But now, it's ever more ours to build upon, to make stronger, to make better for a church that looks to us to serve and to lead it. Whether we're staying here in town or headed far elsewhere, the degrees we receive tonight are the end of one journey, but the celebration and start of an even more important one. We can build on the gifts of the promise, the trust, of the one spirit in many things which has been given to us. In doing that, we'll carve out as many trails as there are the number of us. But specific society, only a step for the road. Okay, two. I've never been known for being short sure winded. Friends, always be happy. And always, always say yes. In every age, joy is the sign of the Spirit, of realizing God's will for us. This is, this is a special when things seem challenging, because not even the worst challenge is greater than the power of God, than the power of His people working together. And lastly, none of us out here alone. We are the fruit, all of us, graduates and not, the fruit of people who said yes to God, yes to service, yes to us.
and yes opens all the doors to life. It opens the doors to every good thing. But never more when it leads us down the path we wouldn't have expected and we follow it. Graduates, never be afraid. Always enjoy the ride. Just like those who got us here, you will bear amazing fruit. As of 2010, it's a blessing to share this church and this vineyard with you. I know you will love it and serve well in it always. And I pray that as you journey on, you will have all the fun and every blessing there is in the world. So enough talking. Let's do it. Thank you. God love you.